In the summer months, it's the insect world which fills the skies with life, as dragonflies and damselflies emerge for their brief aerial adulthood. Huge eyes give these ancient insects excellent vision, and their prey is caught on the wing, hunted down by sight. But this adult stage is only the tip of their iceberg of life. The transition between water-breathing swimmer and air-breathing flyer is the most dramatic and dangerous part of their existence. Very early on a summer morning, a fully grown darter nymph pulls itself up out of the water on a reed stem. It works hard to hook its feet into the stem and anchor itself firmly in position. It's about to enter a stage in which it is completely helpless. A good grip at this point is essential. Fluid is coursing through the adult dragonfly, which currently lies just beneath the old restrictive skin. The entire body of the nymph can be seen to pulse and throb. The old skin hardens and, as the pressure builds within, it splits releasing the adult from its youthful limits. The huge adult eyes, which until this moment have been peeping out through narrow nymph goggles, now get their first glimpse of the world. Exhausted, the dragonfly falls back as it gathers its energy for one final push. A strong flip and the darter frees its abdomen from the vacant skin and regains an upright position. Over the next hour or so, it will remain helpless as it fills wing veins and stretches these fabulous structures whilst hardening its new skin. The wings reach outward for the first time. This dragonfly will never again fold its wings above its body. They are firmly locked into the flight position. The newly emerged dragonfly is known as a tenoral. Its colour is smudgy green, giving it a little camouflage while it spends the next few days feeding and growing in the hedges and trees nearby, well away from the competition of the water's edge. By the time this dragonfly returns, he will have to compete with other strong adults. Patrol a territory, find a mate and lay fertilised eggs to ensure the continuation of life next summer. The mown paths through the fields of the nature reserve provide an unusual feeding opportunity for a very familiar bird. This young blackbird has learnt that there's plenty of food to be found in the thicker grass along the edges of the paths. Caterpillars, like this tasty morsel, are important packets of protein for a growing bird. But this greedy guy has developed a taste for an altogether larger meal, slugs. The blackbird repeatedly wipes the slug across the turf, using the damp grass like a flannel to clean off the bitter tasting slime. However, the more the slug is poked, prodded and pecked, the more thick mucus it exudes. After a mucus marathon, it's the blackbird that triumphs, and its efforts are rewarded with a big beakful. And, despite what we might think, the effort seems to be worthwhile, as this particular bird has developed quite a taste for these slimy snacks. There's a mammal feeding in the ditches around Black Hole Marsh, which has caused quite a stir with visitors to the site. A species which suffered catastrophic losses across the country in the 1980s and had completely disappeared from Devon by the 1990s, but which is now making a welcome comeback to the county. If you're a patient, observant and most of all lucky, you might catch a glimpse of a water vole on the Axe Estuary wetlands. From a captive breeding project which reintroduced voles to the site in 2010, a small but stable population has grown on the wetlands, 
fattened by the sugary new growth of reeds and grasses, and protected from the artificial predator pressures of American mink, which all but obliterated their like on the river 20 years ago. Water voles create runs through the thick grass on the edge of the ditch, linking small feeding lawns which they use for their daily foraging. Finding these grazed lawns is the secret to sneaking a glimpse of this seldom seen mammal. They produce these short cropped areas through their feeding behaviour, reaching up into the reeds to pull down a tasty looking stem. They then trim it into lengths their dexterous little paws can manage, before then settling back to enjoy a juicy reed or perhaps a slightly tougher leaf. Once a familiar part of our river wildlife, water voles existed happily alongside UK predators, their narrow burrows and ability to swim giving them a safe escape from these animals. However, in the 1950s, mink escaped into the British countryside and made a meal of these defenceless animals by being equally adept in the water and slim enough to squeeze down into a breeding burrow. Entire populations were lost. The vole's confidence in its aquatic escape route means that you are able to get quite close to them as they feed. But be careful, any sudden movement or loud noises will send them diving off with a distinctive plop. In this short film, we've only managed to catch the merest glimpse of the life which calls the Accessory Wetlands home. At a time when space for wildlife in the UK is under enormous pressure, nature reserves such as this represent a hugely important resource for plants and animals, once a familiar part of our landscape. And at a time when the majority of people in the British Isles live in towns and cities, Access to the countryside for people to encounter our amazing wildlife is more important than ever before. Here on the wild wetlands, our natural heritage has the space to flourish. <laughs>